Dave Hilderman here, and this video is all about creating app models for Voice Live 3. Voice Live 3, uh, we decided to do something different with the way we have app modeling. What most companies do in their app modeling is they have tons of parameters and there's tons of stuff that they tweak and tweak. They only expose a few parameters for the users. What we've done is in our app model, we show you every parameter that's in the app model. And we create styles. We've created styles so that you can pick um, models that sort of correspond to classic apps, just for a quick starting point. But if you want, you can go in deep and you can really adjust everything that makes that app model sound the way it is. So that's what this video is going to talk about. It's going to talk about how you can go in there and what all those parameters do and how you can use them to get the sound that you really want to get. I'm going to uh, show you the screen here that shows the, uh, the app model page. So here, the, the acoustic, the first model is, it's actually not a model at all. Acoustic is like nothing. So what you're hearing is just my, my Strat on the, that's the neck pickup with nothing at all. So that's totally clean. Uh, now if I go through some of the, the models here, that's a clean, clean British sound. California, clean sound, so, you know, that'd be a Fender. This one would be a, like a Marshall, that's like a Fender. It'd be like a Vox clean. Deep clean, I'm not actually sure what that is, but this is with the bright switch on on a, just a warmer sort of a boutique amp, clean. This would be one of those teeny little, little amps. That's why we call it little thing. Gives you an idea. Anyway, so these are all these different apps. And if you go in here, you can see all these parameters. There's like so many parameters. Well, what do these parameters do? Well, that's what I'm going to try to explain to you here in this video. So if I put it in the acoustic, acoustic is basically nothing. It's, it's um, so I'll, I guess the architecture of our amp is this. We have the guitar comes in, and then there's EQ. Uh, three bands of fully parametric EQ with lots of gain and gain and cut. You can do 18 dB of boost and cut in each one of the three bands. And then there's a nonlinear section, which is the tube simulation. And the tube simulation is where the distortion happens. So you EQ the sound, you distort it, and then there's EQ after it plus uh, speaker model. Uh, basically we use uh, specific types of EQ to emulate a speaker. So we'll go through that. So here we go. Um, so if we go down here, anything that you, when it, anytime you say pre-gain, so pre-gain would be before the tube emulation, post-gain is after the tube emulation. And here, let's, ju let's just hear what it sounds like if we add some gain to this guitar. Um, so here I'll That's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like if you just have a guitar perfectly clean going in and hitting a tube and distorting. Kind of interesting, but it's got a little bit harsh, a little bit buzzy. So I guess another thing we can do here, let's uh, make it cleaner again. Now let's, um, the first thing that you have to do is you have to simulate a speaker because you don't take the uh, preamp from a tube, get from a guitar amplifier and just go and, and record it. You always have to go through a speaker. A speaker makes a huge, really makes a, impacts the sound that you hear on a guitar. So a speaker, the frequency response of a speaker always has, it only goes up to certain high frequency and then it drops. And typically it, it's, um, I don't know, maybe five kilohertz. So that's what this parameter is. This is the high frequency. So it's the high frequency. So let's just say it goes maybe, uh, let's say, 5 kilohertz. There, that's 5,100 hertz. What does it sound like if I 
So at 20 kilohertz, that's like flat up to 20 kilohertz. We go to 5 kilohertz here. What does it sound like here? So. There, so that's... Uh, and then also the low frequency. A uh, speaker that's in an amplifier, guitar amplifier, typically maybe responds to, you know, maybe 120 hertz would be the 3 dB point, the minus 3 dB point. So that would be a perfectly flat, no EQ, totally clean amplifier. It'd be like a, let's say, a, a, a power amplifier, putting your, your acoustic guitar or your electric guitar through just a preamp and then to a power amplifier into a speaker. That's what it would sound like. So now, let's, um, now if we add gain to that. So that's kind of, you know, it's not bad. A little bit. I mean, it's kind of interesting. A little bit of crash to it, but... And if I really crank the crap out of the game, you'll hear it. It actually sounds... Almost sounds like a fuzz fuzz pedal. So that's with a ton of gain. Now if I... So let's just... Uh, So that's cool. Now, but that's not what amps are like. Like normally, like what happens in amplifiers is there's always some EQ. Like there, there's the tone controls on amps, and also there's it's it's not a flat frequency response. So look, this is this is what happens if I fiddle with things. So let's first let's try fiddling with the EQ of the signal going into the into the tube. So so EQ of the guitar sound pre the tube what's what distorts so let's um i will set the so the frequency let, let's let's boost some mids let's take something like maybe i don't know it's like maybe one kilohertz and let's make it so this is the bandwidth so this line here talks uh the cut and boost of the different bands this is the frequency of the bands and this is the bandwidth so bandwidth is an octave so this is 0.25 octaves i'm going to set it to um i'll set it to yeah just two octaves let's try that so now let's uh so hear how that sounds different it's got the really kind of a powerful kind of a crunch make it a little less here let's hear what it sounds like without that boost very different. And here I'm going to change the frequency of that boost. So that's cool. So now let's try a few other things. Let's, um, to me, I don't know, this is, gosh, I kind of just like it, right? But let's, let's fiddle with a few other things. Let's, um, let's do a little more, maybe let's boost a little more high frequency stuff. So let's, ah, sure, keep that at one octave. So now that, it's kind of not, it's maybe a little, I kind of like the sort of the characteristic of the high frequencies in the distorted stuff, because what happens when you boost those frequencies before the amp, before the tube, I keep calling it the amp, before the tube, the nonlinear tube, it, it really changes what, it changes the characteristics of the distortion a lot, because it's before the distortion, it, it changes what gets distorted. So if I, so right now we don't have any EQ in the post. So if we set the post EQ similar to the pre EQ, let's go to 5300 or whatever that was. What was it? 
5900 sorry if I go to 5900 and I cut some there she maybe yeah one one point one eight let's see what happens if I do it 1.18 there I don't know. Okay, so let's actually, you know, I think I might try to make some crazy sound. So that's kind of a cool sound. I don't mind it. So what is that? So it's kind of nice. So you can sort of has a bit of. Things I'm using these in-ear monitors. And I'm not really sure if they're. It's actually better to do this stuff when you're listening to studio monitors or the actual speakers that you'd be using live. Try a few other things here. Let's see, make this a little wider. Okay, so So that's cool. So that is this thing. So maybe we should let's see what happens if we put a little So a speaker typically what this bandwidth thing is here. Speakers typically have a resonant sort of a peak in the frequency response just just before it drops off before the cutoff so I'm gonna add a little boost there so now I don't know is this do you like this sound I'm not sure another thing we have for power here is amp sag so what amp sag is that is 
uh, when you have a tube amplifier and you're really pushing it hard, you're making it really, really loud, when you're not making any sound with it, the voltage in the amplifier is one thing, and as soon as you hit it, it actually causes the voltage to drop, and it acts like compression because everything gets a little quieter. So that's it. Okay, so that's kind of a cool sound. I am going to store this. I'll store it there. Store. There we go. Now another thing that we have in this amp model thing, it's kind of it's not on the amp tab, it's on the drive tab. What this is, is that all that drive is is different pre-gain and post-gain with the same model that you already built in the amp model. So this is 20 and minus 15, so if I go here to 20, and minus 15. I turn it on. It doesn't change at all, but if I add like another 20 dB. So now, if I put this on hit, so let's just see. So if I go store, store, on the guitar page now. So right now, reverb is on. I usually do, I usually set up my amp sounds with a bit of reverb because, unless I'm in a room where I've got a bit of ambience or something, because usually if you just hear the amp completely dry without a bit of reverb, it it, it's just to me it's just a little weird setting making an amp sound without a bit of reverb so so I got a bit of reverb here to start so here so I got a lot of stuff there so if I just let's just say forget let's not do the hit yeah so that's uh that's the amp sound that we just created. And so I think the thing that we found when we were making these amp models and stuff, uh, you know, you've got the EQ, you've got the guitar goes in, then you apply EQ, and then there's the tube uh, model that is in there and that causes the distortion, and then we have EQ and the speaker simulation after. Well, guitars totally changed the sound of everything and um, this is a Fender Strat and it's a very thin sounding Strat so I find that when I use this guitar and I use the Voice Live 3 I find that the amp sounds are they're a little bit bright so I usually go on them having, having to tweak things so that's the thing I, I made this video so that hopefully you can go in there and you can get your Voice Live 3 sounding the best for the kind of guitar that you've got. And it's also kind of fun and you can sort of experiment with different things. So actually a few, of them, a few other things I'm going to show you here. So if I go back to this guitar thing, I'll get off the drive there and let's go to the amp. So it says acoustic because that's what we started from because that's nothing. If you fiddle with the EQ on the, the post EQ, I didn't even hardly do anything with post EQ, but if I, if I go here to post EQ, so low post there we go let's add some girth to it that's a little boosting at 92 hertz a little low but let's just say 160 hertz
A lot of times speakers will have a the lowest speakers on a tube amp a lot of times have a bit of a mid, mid scoop. Yeah, so that, so actually I'll let you hear what this, this thing sounds like that. That's what it sounds like on the neck pickup. This is what it sounds like on neck and middle pickup. Center pickup. is the center and bridge pickup. And this is the bridge pickup. Yeah, so that is the amp model in Voice Life 3 and Voice Life 3 Extreme. So I hope you have fun and I hope you learned a bit from this and if you can, um, you know, you can uh, go and play around with it and get your own sound. So, I guess another thing I didn't mention is we also have a tube and a transistor model. Transistor is a little more harsh than the tube, which you'd expect. Because a transistor hard clips, tube does soft saturation. So, there we go. That's it. I'm going to store that preset. There we go. New crunch is what I call it. There we go. And I hope you have a great day.